with a new Tales from the Heart project, Muse. If you don't mind telling us who you are and your official title, that would be fabulous. I'm Stephen McKenzie, and I'm uh, the master printer and shop manager for the Newark Print Shop. Would you mind telling the audience a little history about who you are and where you grew up and how you went from being this Midwestern kid to being in a print shop in New Jersey. <laughs> okay, certainly. Well, um, I grew up in the 50s uh, to uh, parents who were uh, very committed to being good parents. Uh, came from a, a large family. I'm the oldest of six. Um, my father was a businessman and my mother was a stay-at-home parent. Uh, growing up in Midwest Minnesota uh, was uh, a wonderful experience for me at the time. It was almost idyllic. Uh, I had a great childhood, um, uh, had a great uh, uh, adolescence. Uh, I was very much into being a jock at the time. I was a football player, a wrestler, a basketball player, a baseball player. I loved wow. all those things. Also, though, I was an artist as well. I was sort of getting into the art thing, but I wasn't really convinced about wanting to be an artist. But in any case, I did it. I took those courses. I would always be called on to do all the art projects for high school, for the my grade school and high school classes and things like that. So, um, but in any case, um, I graduated from high school in '69. I went off and attended a private uh, undergraduate school by the name of St. John's University, located in the middle of the pine woods of Minnesota. Very beautiful place, very isolated, but very, very inspirational. Um, I loved my uh, four years there as an undergraduate. I uh, earned a BA in art, strictly art. Uh, it's where I was introduced to printmaking and uh, where I fell in love with the process and just decided that was the process I wanted to do sort of for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> I graduated in 73 from, from the school and uh, from there I uh, returned back home to stay for a while and also uh, became uh, let's say, uh, a blue-collar working man by way of uh, making a bit of a living by working in a factory where uh, I uh, got to experience what, what working life was all about. Not that I hadn't known that already because I was very much working throughout my entire life, starting when I was very young with a paper route. But working in a factory and punching a clock gives you a perspective. And that perspective was <laughs> As much as I actually did enjoy the work, I'd say, no, I don't think I'm going to be a machinist for the rest of my life. When the uh, economy shifted and uh, uh, changed and, uh, and layoffs came, I was one of the artists, I was, well, I was one of the uh, workers laid off from my my job, but it turned out to be a great thing because I ended up getting unemployment and uh, as a result of getting unemployment and also because of a good friend who I was uh, in contact with uh, from my college days, I moved back up to my uh, to the area where I was I had gone to school and uh, started living in this small town and we set up a, a printmaking and painting studio. I had bought a small press and we installed that press and for approximately a year and a half to two years I lived this great life of collecting unemployment and <laughs> making art. At one point I woke up to find myself broke. Okay, now mm -hmm. I knew this was coming. I was trying to sort of he, like head it off at the pass, but 
it caught up with me. So uh, I woke up one morning. I was broke. What was I going to do? I thought, ah, I know. I'll go down to social services and see if they'll help me out. Well, uh, they did, in fact, help me out. However, there was one little catch, and that little catch was I had to work for it. <laughs> it was not going to be given to me for free. <laughs> so I find myself uh, out on the side of a Minnesota road in the middle of December, you know, 20 degrees or so, swinging a double-bladed axe at these little sapling trees by the side of the road, uh, and I'm going, Lord, no, this is not, <laughs> I have got to do something to get myself out of this situation that I find myself in. Well, um, fortunately, uh, I had an avenue that I could turn to, and that was my personal work as an artist. Anyway, so um, I decide that, okay, after, uh, you know, having lived in, you know, for a year or so in Minneapolis, I needed to then move on to earn my MFA. So I, um, you know, sent out applications to a, a number of, of institutions around the country, east and west, one of them being to Temple University Tyler School of Art. Well, one morning, about 8 o'clock, phone rings, the voice on the other end says, oh, hello, I'm so-and-so from uh, Tyler School of Art, and I was calling to see if you were still interested in attending our program. And I said, well, yes, I was. Uh, I very much like what you have to offer, but I really like the uh, the, your own program and would be interested in that. He said, well, why didn't you say something about it? Well, I didn't know. I said, I thought I just, you wouldn't allow first year. He said, let me just talk with my committee and I'll get back to you. About 10 minutes or so later, calls back and said, we're willing to, we're prepared to offer you an assistantship to our program in Rome. I was like, whoa! All right! Wow. <laughs> Events. Yeah, I know. From from being on the side of the road, swinging a double bladed axe, uh, <laughs> quite below in Minnesota, to 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 then you know like you know like basically three years later, uh, ending up with an offer to be able to go to Rome for their program. It was like wow! I felt like I had arrived. <laughs> Speak and say that. <laughs> At the end of my one year in Rome, essentially, I flunked out. Oh. I flunked. I, it was like, and, and like, well, how did this happen, right? How could this happen? How could this happen to me? Sort of, I guess, uh, licking my wounds, if you will, or you know, feeling sad and sorry for myself for a certain period of time, and feeling like I'd really like blown it and failed, right? It's like, really, it's my first, it's like, well, my experience of being out on that roadside in Minnesota was something of a failure. It didn't feel to the same extent uh, as significant as this particular failure was for me in Rome, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, that failure just sort of really rocked my world. Mm -hmm. I had never, to that point, ever suffered something as, as as uh, grievous, if you will, mm -hmm. as this particular failure to, to, you know, meet or reach my objectives, right? And along my life, I'd always reached my objectives or accomplished my goals or things like that. I, I never had any, you know, it's like, you know, never had really any real serious problems, so to speak. You know, it was things always seemed to kind of go my way mm -hmm. up until this moment in time. So, you know, I returned. You know, I was I'd been in Rome almost a year when I finally returned. It was, and when I returned, I knew almost immediately that I had to leave. I had to. I had to go. I had to move to another. Move in another direction with my life. And where was I going to move? And um, you know. I mean, I knew something a bit about the West. I traveled out west. Thought, well, I'm gonna do. I wanted to consider going west, but then I thought, well, but in the east is New York. 
And New York is the center of the art world. Mm -hmm. Even to this day, mm -hmm. it is still the center. I mean, you can, you can go all the way. There's lots of other art places in our cities happening. But it, it's still New York. I don't care what you say. It's <laughs> still New York. Okay, so I decided I'd go to, I'd go east. Mm. And meanwhile, you've been in Rome. You've right. been in Philadelphia. Right, right. You were in Minnesota. Right, right. Uh, Canada as right. well. Right, Canada as well, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. you decided to yeah. move east yeah. and yeah. you came, yeah. I guess, technically home. Yeah. 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 So, so for all the people who are watching this yeah. and have seen the transitions that have continuously right. happened in your life, right. um, now you're at the point where you are doing what you love in a place that you love doing it. Right. Um, what type of advice would you be able to give to those people who are at a crossroads, who are sitting in their car? for three hours debating whether they should go to one college or another, or right. sitting on the side of the road, right. chopping down trees in 20-degree yeah. weather. Right. Uh, what would you tell those people that just need a little bit of inspiration? Never, like, if you, if you have your vision of what it is that you really want to do, then you keep at it until you achieve it.